All right, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to install a three inch integrated engineering catted down pipe on a 2017 Golf Sport Wagon. This video is something I wanted to make because when you type in YouTube Golf Sport Wagon downpipe, not a whole lot comes up. You do get a few Golf R installs, which are super helpful. The Humble Mechanic and Deutsche Auto Parts, check them out now. But also, I didn't see any downpipe installations on jack stands versus using a full lift. So I just wanted to see if it was even possible. Now, this downpipe was a first mod for me because my goal was to do a stage two ECU flash tune, and I will be covering that in a future video as well to get me somewhere in that 250 horsepower range. The downpipe also could be an essential mod for doing any other future sort of turbo upgrades if I go IS-20 or IS-38. So it's nice to have it now. Now, before we get into the real install, please note, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a guy learning how to work on Volkswagens for the first time, just like you maybe, although most of you are probably better at it anyways. So if you are watching this video, please just use this as a helpful guide of tips and tricks of things that, that I did, because I know for a fact I didn't go in order, and I know for a fact I probably missed a few steps. So please reference your installation instructions that came with the downpipe you bought and just use this as a helpful guide. If you are planning on doing a similar downpipe install and are curious about how much time to set aside, I kind of set aside a full weekend because this is my daily driver and if I ran into issues, I wanted to make sure I could get it fixed and drivable again. Now actually it probably only took me about four to five true working hours on the project and a trip to the hardware store and I will say that for any job like this, having a friend makes the job way more enjoyable and at some parts makes the install a heck of a lot easier. All right, that's enough intro, let's get into it. All right, so let's kick this job off and we get started with I think my least favorite part about it, which is getting it up on jack stands safely and stably. So I started by jacking up the passenger side rear and placing a jack stand on the passenger side front. Then I went around to the driver's side rear jacked it up and put a jack stand on the passenger side rear. Once I got that stabilized, I moved on over to the driver's side and first started by jacking up the pa or the driver's side front, placing a jack stand under the driver's side rear, all on the pinch welds. Then finally, finding a new place to jack from that it was stable and solid, and then placing a jack stand on the driver's side front. Now here I'm taking off the front passenger tire and I'm doing this because it allows you easy access to a few of the bolts that we're going to need to get to later. The first step is to disconnect your O2 sensor, simply pull it out of the bracket and then hold down on the clip and pull it apart. You'll notice I disconnected two connectors, ignore that, you really just need the O2 sensor disconnected. Once disconnected, remove the rest of the O2 sensor wire from the clips that are holding it to the back of the firewall. All right, next we're going to move over to this V-band clamp that holds on the stock downpipe to the stock turbo. You're going to want a 6 millimeter Allen bit. Don't worry, you don't need to use this crazy universal setup I have here. I was just having some issues getting to it because I didn't have a quarter inch drive ratchet available to me. You probably do. Loosen that all the way. If your V-clamp doesn't come loose, just simply use a, something like a pry bar or a screwdriver to release that and then remove the clip and push it off of the downpipe. Here's where I did things a little bit differently than the order of the actual instructions. I wanted to get that O2 sensor out so I didn't damage the wire or the O2 sensor itself. So I removed it at this step using a nice O2 sensor removal socket um, and it was super easy to get to. So you just break that loose and unscrew that and then remove the sensor versus trying to get it out while you're pulling on the downpipe, which you'll see later that that process is not easy, so I didn't want to risk damaging that. So here's the setup I use for most of the heat shield bolts as well as the prop shaft bolts. What you're seeing there is a the bit, the universal joint, two extensions, and then the ratchet. All right, I'm going in through the wheel well to access this first heat shield cover that's covering the axle. There's two eight millimeter Allen nuts that hold this on. I'm accessing it with an eight millimeter Allen bit, a universal joint, and two extensions. 
All right, here is how I access the second eight millimeter Allen that holds this heat shield on. There's a little indentation in the heat shield where you're able to slide the eight millimeter Allen bit and your extensions to help get a good hold on it. Once you remove that second nut, you can reach in the wheel well, grab that heat shield and pull it out. So now that you've removed the axle heat shield, you can now take off the heat shield that protects the prop shaft. This one's held on by two bolts as well. The first one is accessible through the wheel well. It needs a 16 millimeter socket. I used a universal joint and two extensions again, as mentioned, through the wheel well. To remove the last bolt that holds on the heat shield for the prop shaft, you're gonna wanna go underneath the car and in through the drive shaft. There's a 10 millimeter triple square bolt that holds it on, so you're gonna need a 10 millimeter triple square bit to access that. Here, I'm still using my universal joint and some extensions to get to it. Reach up there and grab the heat shield and pull it out. Be careful as to not scratch the prop shaft or anything else as you're bringing it out. To remove this downpipe on an all-wheel drive car, you have to move the prop shaft to the left to give you more room to access it and slide it out. To do that, you have to remove the three bolts that hold it in. So grab a 10 millimeter 12 point socket, a universal joint, and some extensions and start to get those out. Now it's more than likely you won't be able to access all three of those bolts without rotating the prop shaft. To do this, you're going to have to put your car in neutral and then go to the back end of the prop shaft and put your ratchet on tighten using that same 10 millimeter 12 point socket and push as hard as you can until you start to rotate that prop shaft. Once you have access, go back to the front end, put the ratchet on loosen and take out that last bolt. Now in order to move the prop shaft out of the way and to the left, you're going to have to be able to rock the engine forward. So to do that, you're going to have to go under the car and remove the two transmission mount bolts. Both of these use a 16 millimeter socket. Now it's important to know that both of these bolts are not the same length. The shorter one goes towards the front of the car and the longer one goes farther towards the back. Alright, this is where a friend and a pry bar come in handy. So I had a friend pry the engine forward so that way I could move the prop shaft over to the left. All right, so now you really gotta reach up towards the catalytic converter on the stock down pipe where there's two 13 millimeter nuts that need to be removed on either side. These were kind of a pain in the butt. You can access them supposedly from the top or the bottom. I actually loosened them from the bottom and had a friend grab them from up top once they were loose. All right, now this downpipe hanger mount step is totally optional. I found it a lot easier to just remove it here. The bolts are super accessible and easy to get to. And you know what, they were pretty rusted on for me. So I ended up just replacing these and now I have some nice new hardware to go with it once I put the new downpipe on. All right, this is where things start to get pretty exciting because you know you're pretty darn close to getting this downpipe out. So these are two 13 millimeter nuts that hold on this exhaust clamp on so I started to loosen those as much as possible of course they were pretty rusted so I couldn't even get them all the way out but they were loose enough so I was able to hammer them over and slide that clamp over towards the muffler side and once I got far enough over it would release that down pipe piece of the exhaust or mid pipe all right so here's the most exciting and frustrating part of the entire down pipe removal process you're going to have to just be careful and move slowly and slowly rotate the pipe clockwise as you pull it out. You're going to want to be careful not to bend any heat shields or hit any important components as you do so. Here you can see I have a friend that's helping me from above give me an idea of what direction I should be rotating and pointing the downpipe in as it's coming out. He's able to see exactly where the pipe is going and how it's coming out and if it's hitting anything from above where there's a lot more light. So that's definitely something I would suggest. Get a friend, your wife, girlfriend, whoever to come and at least guide this process with you. All right, you got this bad boy out and as you can see, there are some main differences between the stock downpipe and the IE downpipe. Mainly the fact that the 76 diameter of the new mid pipe will have a lot higher flow throughout the entire thing as compared to the 60 millimeters of the stock down pipe. The other thing that's great about most aftermarket down pipes is they come in two sections what will make getting it installed a heck of a lot easier. Now remove the hanger mount from the down pipe. I don't have any specific exhaust hanger tools so I just pulled on it as hard as I could until it came loose. 
Now, since we took out the stock downpipe in a clockwise rotation, it made sense that when we're putting in the new downpipe, you're going to want to work it in in a counterclockwise motion. So start to feed that pipe in. Once you get it up and through some of the heat shields, you're going to notice you'll start to rotate it counterclockwise for it to meet up to the turbo flange. You'll see my friend came in to help me and help pull that up through the top and get that in there and mount it on those hangers that are up towards that turbo. While I was holding the downpipe in place, I had my friend reach in above to replace the two nuts on the downpipe mount bracket and put those loosely in place to help us get everything back into the right spot. Next, my friend got back into the car to pry the engine forward slightly while I replaced the prop shaft in the right spot. You want to be really careful to make sure that you get that prop shaft lined up properly before you release the tension of the engine because you don't want to screw up that bearing. The next step was to replace the transmission bolts. Remember the longer one goes in the back and the shorter one goes in front. It was very helpful to have a friend here to help hold the engine and transmission in place to make sure that there was no tension on these bolts when they were going back in. These are technically single use bolts and should be replaced if you take them out. Here I'm placing the V-band over the downpipe flange and connecting it to the turbo flange and loosely putting it in place until I'm ready to tighten everything down. Now I'm grabbing my 10 millimeter 12 point socket and replacing all the bolts that hold in the prop shaft. Make sure you torque these down to the proper specs. Now it comes time to put the mid pipe onto the rear half of the exhaust. You'll probably notice that I'm doing things here a little non-conventionally. For the perfect application, you'd buy a 76mm to 60mm reducer for the 1.8T engines. Here I'm using a universal exhaust adapter that's a 3 inch interior diameter to a 2.5 inch outside diameter. This slid perfectly over the 60mm exhaust that was coming out of the muffler and made the sizing perfect for the clamp. I am planning on replacing this with the true 76mm to 60mm adapter when that comes in. This will work, but it is not the ideal situation, I will say that. Now it comes time to loosely place the V-band clamp between the mid pipe and the down pipe and hold that together while you get everything else situated just right. Reinstall the exhaust hanger for the down pipe. Then use the hardware that came with the downpipe to loosely put this in place until you're ready to tighten everything up. Now you're almost at the final step. Go through and tighten all the bolts up in the order that the installation instructions for your downpipe inform you to do so. The final step is to replace your O2 sensor. Slowly feed that in. If you want to, put just a little bit of anti-seize on it, but make sure you don't get it anywhere near the sensor. Grab your oxygen sensor socket and tighten it up just right. Take your O2 sensor harness and rewire it throughout all the clips on the firewall and then plug it back in. Alright, now we gotta put that front tire back on. Then to get the car off the jack stands, you just inverse what you did to put it on the jack stands. Alright, so that wraps it up the install of the integrated engineering downpipe on a golf sport wagon with 4Motion. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. Now, if you want to know the most difficult parts or where I found it most challenging, it was probably those heat shield fasteners, the very first ones you took off, and getting up on four jack stands. I just, it freaks me out a little bit to work with jack stands, but once I got it and got it all stable, I felt a lot better and was able to get the job done no problem. I'm super happy with how the install went. I'm really proud of myself that I took my time and I feel like I did things for the most part right. Um, I really enjoy the sound of the new downpipe as well. Yeah. Uh, I would say one key factor that getting this all done is having universal joints that are working well and extensions for all of your ratchet sets will make this job a whole lot easier. Now. I hope this video was helpful. If you are still watching, please consider sharing this with your friends. Also, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know about future videos, make sure you hit that bell down in the bottom to get notified about those. Thanks for jumping in the dad wagon and keep your eye out for the next video.